Thank you for tuning in to Splat Attack. This episode, we will be discussing the 30th anniversary of Roundhouse with several cast and crew members of the show. If you are watching on YouTube, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you are listening on a podcast app, please leave us a review. I'm sure you're sick of hearing this from other content creators, but it is a tremendous help to grow our channel so other nostalgic slimesters can find us. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe to our Patreon. We have exclusive episodes, bonus content, and watch parties every month. Plus, Halloween is just around the corner, and we have some fun stuff in mind for our patrons. Don't miss out. Go to patreon.com slash splatattack. Thank you all for your support, and now it's time to go to the house that is round. Welcome to Splat Attack, where we're taking it back to Slimefield Past. I'm your gackerific co-host, Brett. And I am your Slimetastic co-host, Alex. And Brett, I think it's uh, time we had another 30th anniversary episode. What do you say? I definitely think it's time, especially with the SNCC 30th anniversary happening around this time. You know, we gotta get some love from other shows around. Uh, last year we did Are You Afraid of the Dark 30th anniversary, um, you know, 30th anniversary to the pilot, of course. Um, and now this time we got the cast of Roundhouse here to celebrate uh, a cult classic among all the SNCC shows in the first lineup that premiered uh, back in 1992. So today I think we're going to give everyone just a little taste of Roundhouse, where they've seen it back then, seen it now or not, and, uh, you know, show them why it's such an amazing show to watch, even if they haven't watched it. And uh, it, Roundhouse is an awesome show. It, it it has very much like Space Cases. It has a devoted fan base, but uh, once it was off the air, there was it was off the air, and a lot of our listeners came from that demographic of mid to late '90s, and they completely missed the show. And then there's people like Brett and my age who grew up with the show and and loved the show. So uh, I'm really excited to reintroduce this to people who may have forgotten it, and also remind people why those who are diehard fans why they love it and introduce it to people who've never heard of it before so this will be a fun episode uh so we've got a huge cast of characters with us today so i'm gonna have uh each one introduce themselves very briefly uh tell us your name and how long you were a part of the show if you can remember that much which i'm sure you can and uh and then we'll transition to the next person and we're just going to go down the zoom screen so we're going to start with jennifer will you introduce yourself please hey guys jennifer c here oh my gosh it's so fun to see everybody it's such a blast and a, from the past and a pleasure to see you all thanks alex and brett for getting us all together i um came in i think on the third season me and amy came together uh and i was just on one season and it was like one of my life-changing jobs for me it was amazing hi i'm crystal lewis and i was on season one and um agreed with jennifer it was a life-changing pivotal moment um that yeah the no one can understand it except for the people right here in this room, I feel like. It just, yeah, it was a very, very unique, special um, experience. Hi, I'm Mickey Duran. <laughs> and um, I was there for all the seasons. And um, yeah, I do agree. I didn't really understand to that degree of how, uh, how, it, how, how precious it was until it was gone because you guys were my family, like my first time moving out on my own. And 
and uh, then family here in LA, moving out on my own. So uh, yeah, I can't wait to recatch. Uh, hey, I'm uh, John Crane, and uh, I actually um, uh, played the dad on the show, but but started with Rita and Buddy um, with a show called Cheap Theatrics, which was sort of the a live version of, of Roundhouse before it actually became Roundhouse. We traveled in a station wagon and a U-Haul up and down the East Coast, kind of, uh, you know, refining the show and kind of, um, you know, working on it and crafting it and creating what ultimately became Roundhouse. So uh, not only was I involved in the, in the four years of the show, but also uh, two years before that uh, when we were doing cheap theatrics around the country. So. <laughs> I, uh, I'm uh, Sean and I was in the season three, 1993 uh, season and uh, came aboard with Jennifer and Amy. And uh, we, uh, the thing for me that was always fun about the show was that most of the cast, we were already friends outside before we ever came together at Roundhouse. I've known Mickey since she was a baby girl. Natalie and I have worked together forever and a day. Uh, Seymour, Alfred, Mark, David, Mark, David, and I have known each other for a really long time. So Barry, I, I don't Barry for years. So, um, Ivan, so anyhow, it was, uh, that really actually helped a lot for me. It was unique because, um, I had, uh, I had this bittersweet feeling of coming aboard to replace a cast member who everyone here loves dearly. And uh, it, it was heavy on, it was heavy emotionally to try to fill that space because you don't replace somebody like Dominic, I'll say the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was a wonderful man, a wonderful individual. Um, it was an awkward kind of transition, if you will, but uh, the cast was phenomenal. The show itself was dynamic. Um, the concept of being live was so fun. Uh, even though we probably spent more time playing basketball in the back corner with a little <laughs> foam ball and a hoop on the back wall uh, in between takes. Um, the the work was real and it was energizing and entertaining. And uh, you could tell that it, it moved uh, a lot of young people more than I probably have ever seen in a lot of shows. Um, I'm Julene Renee. And Roundhouse was a very special time in my life. I was there all seasons. I got to witness the joy of so many talented people uh, working together, each featured so beautifully. The thing I love most about the show is I feel like not only us family, but so was the audience. It was like this seamless transition between performers and audience that we were all kind of growing together so i feel very on the hi i'm amy early and uh i came in with jen and uh sean on season three and uh and rita and benny and buddy flew me flew me out there and i auditioned and, and saw all of you amazing actors performers, singers, and dancers, and I was just blown away. And uh, my heart's pounding so fast right now. <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy to see you all. And I had, obviously, like you all said, Crystal and Jen, like one of the best experiences of my life. And definitely paved the way for, for things that came later that I would have never done. I get the, the schooling and the genius of all of you um, you know, for the future. So thank you so much. And I'm so happy to see you all. <laughs> I'm Natalie. And um, I like to say that I was adopted by Rita and Benny and <laughs> Buddy. Uh, I was there from the inception in Santa Monica. I think they were pitching it to Dolly Parton and Dolly Wood, I want to say. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just doing this free workshop, whatever. <laughs> And uh, look at that. I did something for the love of it. I was completely myself. And, and I think probably for the, that was the first time as a creative person that I felt seen. Um, and just those, that enthusiasm that Rita has that I still have yet to see in anybody, just that childlike enthusiasm made me 
uh, except me with all my warts and all, you know everything, and it just brought out the funny. And that's how all of a sudden I found this, you know, like a super super fertile soil to be, you know, really kind of an idiot, but um, with you know very measured dialogue, and it was just amazing. It was just amazing. And then the the writers that they hired. Um, you know, the word organic comes to mind because they just watched people from these bleachers that were on the set that were elevated. And it was like we were literally the animals in the zoo. And then, but then on Monday or Sunday night, you'd get that script. And it was as if it was just, you know, ri written by the cast members themselves. Of course, we couldn't have done that except for John, maybe. I, I don't know. Most of, most of these people are cr crazy talented. But, um, it just started to grow into the, you know, this amazing beast that it was. And it's, um, you know, I, I, I second and third and, and fourth the commentary of, wow, this was like genius. This was, you know, museum genius. And uh, it's too bad that it, it isn't syndicated and other people can, you know, relive it and uh, it, and or revamp it, you know, it, it was just something, you know, and I still remember those 72 track recording studios, Benny Hester. That was just <laughs> unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. Hello, everybody. Willis Green. Go by Seymour. Uh, man, that was uh, when uh, Rita, I was still new to California, didn't know where my career was going to go, didn't know nobody. And wonderful lady, lady gave me a shot. That was amazing, and uh, didn't know how the show was going to be at all, and kind of didn't know if the show was really going to go. And then I learned so much from the show, and it was amazing, man. It just it was like it was like all family, and my kids was born, and everyone loved the kids, and everyone had kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was amazing, yeah. And then just, yeah, I love it. I love the. Uh, the opportunity and uh, it was just a nice time. And it's good to see everybody, everyone again. Okay. Rita Sheffield Hester here. And I'm one of the creators of the show. And I want to say I'm so blessed to see every one of you today and to have had you on the show is just a miracle for my life. And I will never forget any of you and I want you to know I every person all of you had such a special place in my heart and on the show well, and I could not have found a more talented group of people every day I would just pinch myself and go I'm so blessed to have these people in front of me every day to do all this fun stuff that we got to do together and that's it was just a highlight of my life Hey, and I'm Benny Hester, and uh, I was one of the producers of the show, and also the music producer, and uh, had just great people, you guys, every one of you to work with, and a great rock and band, high powered, and uh, it was really just a big experiment, and it was an exper it, it was an experiment that that took off. And uh, you could feel the energy in the room every single night, uh, be even before the audience came in. There was just a, an anticipation about something that was going to happen, an event that was going to happen. And Natalie, you mentioned Dolly Parton. Yeah, Dolly Parton was our partner for a year at Fox. And before it went to Nickelodeon, a lot of people don't know that. And uh, she's just a really great person. Yeah, the funny thing was we did the showcase that Natalie mentioned. Um, Natalie was a part of this from the very beginning. And, well, John Crane goes so far back with me, but John was too. But we did these series of showcases mm -hmm. and invited all of these television producers and network people to come and see it and i was always trying to get to nickelodeon and they were the only ones that did not come to the showcase and we got offers from yeah yeah they did not see the showcase and i kept trying to get to them have someone invite them and i at that time i had to do everything i had to do my own casting i had to do everything 
so um the funny thing was that dolly was originally we uh, buddy had written on her show and we got and i produced one episode of her show at abc and then benny and i took a song to her that she cut that became a number one hit for her uh so benny uh did that and so she did come to the showcase and she tried to get her production company sand dollar and 20th television to do the show and too long of a story here but it didn't work out and somewhere down the line uh, my agent at icm got uh, the videotape of our showcase at second city mm -hmm. he got it to nickelodeon and he, they just walked in his office one day and said hey do you know anybody do you have a kid show here anything uh for for a kid show and he said well yeah i do and so the rest is history we there's a long story with that too but they didn't see the showcases but they did see a rough vhs copy of the showcase done at um at second city wow, um, wow. All right. Well, uh, I, I'm I'm going to bogart the mic for these first two questions, and then I'll hand it over to you, Brett. Sure. Uh, for the the first question, I have is, I'm actually going to shoot this one to uh, John uh, because, like I had said earlier, a lot of the people who listen to our podcast it's it's very divided. Those who grow up uh, were were born in '80s and got the early to mid 90s and then those who were born in the 90s and got the the mid to late uh, 90s so there is a pretty good portion of our viewers and listeners who have never even heard of the show roundhouse if you were to describe what roundhouse is oh my gosh how would you describe it <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> it's imp it, it's impossible to describe i mean Ooh. you know because uh it's uh, there's no other show really like it. I mean, uh, you know, because uh, it because variety show doesn't really get it because um, you know variety show infers like a host and different acts and a sketch show doesn't get it because there was sketches in it. Uh, there was certainly a lot of comedy. Uh, dance show doesn't get it. Music show doesn't get it because um, it wasn't just that. Um, but it was this. It was this really great assemblage of uh, of kind of what is here of talent um and and it was presented in a really unique way um the music was you know again it had those things it had those elements it had music it dance comedy and even even pathos to it too i mean we did some episodes that were really moving and touching so we 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 touched on all of these uh you know elements of entertainment um in, in a in a in a way uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. I'm sure some, somebody would say I'm biased, but in a way that was never done before, really. And I can't think of an example of, of something that's been done that way since. Um, you know, it was it was shot live, uh, which uh, you know, not not live to tape, but we we shot it um, from beginning to end. Uh, which I'm not sure shows do or even set up to do, uh, you know, I guess with the exception of Saturday Night Live, but even that, it was a very different show. So the energy of the show was very different. So I, I would say, I don't know, it's, it's, it's hard to just sort of say it was this kind of show. Um, it was incredibly entertaining, uh, a, a joy to watch, a joy to be a part of. And, um, I, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, I'd say, Go see an episode, and you'll you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. Sure, I love it. I, I I just think like you nailed it though. It's like every show has something, but we always had theme. We had a theme to our show, which made it I think mean so much. And that's what I didn't realize until later. It's like there was a message in it all, and that's what I think a lot of like there's comedy and all that kind of stuff, dance, entertainment, but we always had a message, you know, and it was always like bring together like. The differences and um, I thought that was really special sorry yeah sorry it's a great point Mickey no because I that you're right I mean it had all these elements but it also had a narrative to it it was also a story to it <laughs> so I mean you know you throw throw that into the mix as well and also John you know I, I always think of it kind of as our own alchemy of incompatible elements you know like 
Julene would come out of a back walkover and start talking. When do you see that on TV? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and we were also the first ones that I think that broke the fourth wall, so to speak, and pulled back and showed all the cameras moving around and showed all the action. And I have to give credit to Bruce Gowers. Bruce was the most magnificent cam camera director, television director. He, the man was brilliant and he was able to grasp everything that we were trying to do. He allowed me to stage the show in our crazy, crazy way that we did. And then he covered it like a rock concert. And it just made the show so much fun. He brought out so, so many elements he was willing to go there with us and be creative and just go with the flow and bring his own thing to it but i also think it was um you know it was just something that pe people had never seen the kind of things that we did and all of the um actors all of you guys bringing your own special talent to it gave such diversity and variety uh to the show and to to give a very crude paraphrase for those who really have never seen the show, if you took essentially the, the sketch comedy concept of like SNL and a concert and kind of improvisational humor, very a la whose line is it anyway, and put a theme with it and mesh all those things together in front of a live audience all in one take, you have Roundhouse. Yeah, it's it's high energy creative chaos and somehow it works as its own genre well true i just i'll just say one other quick thing in the, the lyrics of the opening song there was you know there was a reason why it said we can go anywhere from mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and it was the whole concept and we really did go you know everywhere from there yeah buddy came up with that idea the concept of of a roundhouse a place where trains are turned around and pointed in the right direction Oh, I think we may have, well, Rita froze for us. Yeah. From here. Also, she's still there. She's, she's hanging on. <laughs> but uh, but one of the things that uh, Rita was, was mentioning was that the, the camera operators, I mean, you, there was a time when you all did a conga line and the camera operator got in on the conga line. And uh, there was a, a time where they even used the band. Uh, because they had made a joke about, hey, it's the band, Unplugged. And they were just chilling in the background. MTV presents the band, Unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> they really incorporated everything. They, they had simple like cardboard props uh, where you had a television set and they would pretend to be the TV screen and things like that. Um, so it, it's it's very very fun, high energy, very fun, very creative, and a lot of a lot of the juvenile humor that you would expect for a kids show, but a lot of really strong emotional themes too that you normally wouldn't see in a kids show. So it's it's very very good stuff. Uh, question for and this is I think this is the last centric one for an individual uh for benny and rita and you had touched on this a little bit where did this idea for the show come about and what are some of the challenges you you faced in getting it actually broadcast oh uh, well okay so the idea of the show uh, like john crane pointed out earlier that we started this thing on the road years before and it developed into what became roundhouse and we wanted I wanted a broad, we had such success in the audiences that we had on the road. I had opened three family art series for the John F. Kennedy Center with different shows that were all similar in format to this. And we got great reviews. Uh, we had New York booking agencies, the National Artist Management Company, um, and toured all over America. And I saw the need uh, that kids had for something on television that was more modern that was more reflecting pop culture so it was quite a journey to get it to tv i presented it many many times to many different people it was at a time when uh, nobody would even listen to a pitch if it had music in it they didn't they would turn us down they wouldn't even right. let us come into their office to 
to does it have music in it? Yes. Okay, we we're not interested. We don't want music. Nobody was interested in anything that had music of at that time, time. At that time. And it was just music variety had already had a run and it burned itself out. And then during this period, uh, you know, no in the late eighties and early nineties, you know, nobody was interested. But also, um, I think one of the things that I know is true, and I know that you have, there's a right time and a right place for everything. And I know that Nickelodeon had one slot left open for what they call SNCC, mm -hmm. um, you know, their Saturday night evening. And they had not found anything. And we just happened to keep, be there at that time. And that's just time and luck and, you know, everything is timing. And I, unfortunately, I do think the show was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think it would have been longer lasting if it had been right in the pocket of its time and people would have realized its value a little more. Um, it was right on the curve of pop, of pop music. Um, but at the time, it was uh, the most award-winning show that Nickelodeon had on the air. We had uh, nine Cable Ace nominations, uh, three for Best uh, Variety Special or Series, uh, mm -hmm. the three of us as producers, and we had six Best Original Songs. It won two Youth and Film Awards, and we got an Ollie Award for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Excellence in Television for Kids. Yes. And that came from the uh, Children's Television uh, Museum. So, you know, we had really a lot of things going on. It was a, a terrific time. And I think, you know, it was just a little ahead of its time, but we like breaking the ice. There's just so much to Roundhouse that really catches your attention like nothing other. And it really, it really felt special to tune into that because nothing else, not even on SNCC was similar to to that kind of show, just the high energy on a Saturday night, doing all these different varieties of things. It was it was mesmerizing when I first watched it. Um, but I'm kind of curious if um, if anyone has any particular episodes that they enjoyed uh, doing or have any from memory uh, that they worked on that they would like to share some stories on. Oh my gosh, the what was it? What was the um, where we did meat market? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say amusement park. <laughs> I mean, I could. It's very hard to pick a favorite. I love them all so much, but the, literally the first thing that comes to mind is Mickey and I fighting, like yes, having, girl having fight, a fight, yeah, girl. <laughs> girl fight, yeah. and all the all Jeline and Natalie and Sean and Mickey and I doing the like having a girl band. Let's pretend, and it was the. uh like Miss America pageant or whatever. It just, you nailed these very edgy concepts that were so not kid, but that were so 100% parent. And it was, yeah, just so brilliant. I loved the fact that you were able to come into these probably somewhat um, politically very incorrect ideas at the time. And- Sex um, education. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> now, class, today we begin our study in sex education. Sex! Ah! Now, I know some of you are feeling uneasy about publicly discussing sex. Sex! Ah! But it's very important that we're able to speak freely and openly about <laughs> LCX. Dylan Mark, what, what, what was your thing in the diary? Like, I love that thing. This is Jennifer Mixalot. Mr. and Mrs. Mixalot. Sir and Dame Jennifer Mix-a-Lot. The Mix-a-Lot. Yeah, that, the, the, whatever you, I don't know what the name of that episode was, but oh my gosh, I loved it. I think that was the beauty episode. The beauty friend. pageant. Yeah, the beauty pageants. Yes. The beauty pageants. I love the bloopers. Look, here's a cabinet full of weapons. Let's see, a chainsaw, a uh, hand grenades, a oh, flame oh, oh, wait, here, flashlight. Ooh, perfect. Perfect. Oh, 
black guy got it first. I wanted, I wanted John Crane to eat the, the mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but you may oh. remember. Oh. I got I got tipped <laughs> off. I got tipped off yeah. by, about yeah. that happening. I remember that. And I remember jumping out of the chair and chasing Buddy down with a spoonful of mayonnaise. I, I know. I know. That was so <laughs> funny. So funny. Oh. You know, and you great. guys remember when the couch got stolen? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably for a later story. <laughs> keep going with this one first, and we'll come back to that. No, go go ahead. Go go ahead and go with it. Uh, because it, there there is a trivia on IMDb that says that the snick couch was stolen and that the, there was a quite a bit of drama around I'll that. Let, so Benny tell, let Benny tell that. He knows that fully. Well, <laughs> one day I came to work at the studio in Florida at Universal and uh, I had an FBI agent uh, a uh, sheriff's department from the uh, Orange County uh, sheriffs there in Orlando, and I had two police department people, and they wanted to talk to me. And so I thought, wow, what have I, what could I possibly have done? So I went, sat down with them in an office, and they told me that the couch had been stolen. And so, uh, you know, I really didn't know anything about it. As I found out that you know, the the band and some of the audio guys work, you know, they, they would work late at night and they were very, uh, they were always playing pranks and uh, it was uh, just something that they did. They hit it on another uh, show. Uh, and they put in a bunch of junk where it couldn't be found and they never found it. Uh, they thought it was gone and had been removed from the problem. So, uh, I got, I got to that, but it really had nothing. I, I didn't know anything about it till, till later. Oh gosh. Okay. So, uh, the, their feed was cutting out a little bit from what I heard was, uh, the, the band had played some pranks, took the couch from, uh, Clarissa and hit it with a bunch of stuff that nobody could find it. And, <laughs> and you had no clue until it was, uh, it, it was done. Yeah, I think it, it used. I think it actually ended up being some of our audio team, but you know, because they worked late at night, and, uh, you know, working working on posting the shows and all that. But <laughs> nobody ever found it. And uh, as we were leaving Florida, we came back and shot the other seasons here in California at CBS uh, Studios. And as we were leaving, uh, they were sort of tipped off by, by the fact that. The guys were working late one night. They took the couch and put it right in the middle of their set so that when they came in early in the morning, they walked right into it. <laughs> Just returned. We never left it. We we never left with it, you know. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky. I, I I wonder if that I wonder if that's how Snick got the idea for like putting the couch in different locations Probably. for their bumpers. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so. I do. The traveling cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, all right, take it and run with it, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this thing's heavy. <laughs> we got blamed for everything. Uh, from, from that moment on, we were the bad boys, and they always came and got me. I don't know why they got, got me first. Yeah. That's unfair. <laughs> hey, Lisa, Lisa, they come get the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well some somebody somebody had another thing they were gonna share. i didn't see who it was julene julene i to say you know um i don't really think there's a favorite episode because the thing that i felt about the show was it it wasn't like we were on tv we were just in every kid's living room like playing with them, you know, it was like with the cardboard set and with everything, it's just like having friends over to play. And I felt like the thing that stuck out to me the most about the show was Mark David and I kind of carried the pace of the comedy. We either brought it up or we slowed it down. And, and Rita said something that was so beautiful when we first began, she said, you know, we're trying to reach a certain audience. We're trying to reach these kids that are at the in-between age and such a crucial time. If we don't reach them at this period of time, we might lose them. 
they might go off and become teenagers and isolate and go off into this adult world. And she said, you just, you don't realize how important this time is for us to connect as beings. And I felt that that's what the show did because we were so well, everyone was talented. We, we, you know, went around and we all changed roles and positions. We did all these fun things, but then when, like, Crystal would sing, it felt like she was your best friend. She was singing from the inside of you. She was singing all those inner thoughts, that inner world, and saying, it's okay. I'm singing it right here in front of you, and we're all connected. And then we would all come back together at the end, like a big family, like a big group. And that's what was so special about me. I had people that you know, we're Roundhouse fans that I felt like we grew up together and they feel like they're, they were just as much a part of the show as, you know, the cast members. And that was very much included. And, you know, work that I did after that, the audience wasn't really as much of a part of the show as I always felt that the audience was in Roundhouse. Like so many inside jokes, so many silly things which made people come out of their shell. It did exactly what Rita was, you know, aiming to. It connected us. It, it brought everyone together. And, you know, for that, I find so much value. Thank the you, Julian. Yeah. I, that, that's a very important point, too, about uh, Roundhouse, how it feels like everyone's involved, everyone's included, because mm -hmm. it's not often that we see the live audience watching the show with us. And for some reason, yeah. because we see that as well, it feels like we're included at home. Like we couldn't make it, but we're still seeing it live. And uh, I think that's probably why when I think of memorable Roundhouse episodes, I think uh, the family one from season one comes to mind where like everyone's just coming together and kind of going through the trials and tribulations of being a family and some of the you know, actors are playing high school kids. And of course you got the mom and dad who are like trying to help them through it. And at the end of the day, through all the, all the craziness that goes on over the course of a half hour, everyone just comes together with a nice sentimental song. It really has that heartfelt moment where we have a group hug and then, you know, send off the show with a cool dance number. <laughs> right. And for me, I think the most important one was the gang episode. And, you know, we, we did so many funny things and we approached so many difficult subjects, but the way that we ended it with like a moment of silence was so special, so beautiful. We had been so wild and crazy, but when it came down to that one episode of how much we just care about everybody, I just thought that was beautiful. <laughs> Julene, thank you. Julene, you had such a good point. Thank you for voicing exactly why I did the show to start with. You really nailed it. That's really what we wanted to do to reach these kids. And you guys had, there were so many fan letters written from children and from teens and tweens that said, I'm a latchkey kid. I sit at home by myself, but I feel like you're my family and I have friends because you're here for me. And that's really why we did the show. We did it to reach all of those kids that needed their lives to, expand and open up and we, we try to reflect some of their fears and some of their joy and some of the things that they were going through with our show and with all of you guys that's what you did yeah i didn't realize how many people were reaching until you know i was getting fan letters from kids that were saying they were getting abused kids that were being bullied and that every saturday night though they would laugh or I made them laugh or we made them sing. And I was like, wow, I didn't even realize like that part of it, how, how special it was to so many kids for sure. It was, and it's really funny, but there were some issues, there were some things that came about later in real life that we did in sketches, like the going through a metal detector to go to school was a that was a sketch now of course that is really true yeah. but those things happened we had the book we had a, a sketch that sedoni did the bully side airbag for when a bully punches you the airbag goes off and protects you and it was way before bullying or any of those things came about the gang episode the gang episode then but you know it, i mean it was it had just come about but we we touched on things that we thought were vital for kids to grow in, to grow up in. 
Yeah, and and to piggyback on what uh, Julian had mentioned earlier about, and and what you had just pointed out with the the gang episode, gang violence episode, for those of you who never seen the show, who are listening and watching, every episode, as we said earlier, high in energy. Uh, the show comes in with this really awesome song, and then it's constant joke, 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 joke all the way through, uh, with. Uh, sprinkles of really heartfelt songs and then it ends with but before we get started Vinny there's something I've been dying to tell you sure go ahead reprise the theme song and roll the credits whenever my life gets me so down I know I can a reprise of the original theme song and it's just as fun and then it's a, a really awesome fun upbeat dance to usher the show out only two occasions that I can recall they did not end the show with those instances. One was the Christmas episode. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Holiday Spirit? Reprise the song. Whenever when my life gets no, me no, so no, 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 not that one. Not this time. And uh, the second was the gang episode. And uh, there, it wasn't a heartfelt, uh, sweet, sentimental thing. It was a one character left alone, uh, Ivan left alone on stage uh, looking for someone. And then he just slowly fades into the background. And then they put a text on the screen of the repercussions of gang violence. And it's it's a very poignant moment. Uh, one of the very few, I don't want to say one of the few moments that tugs at you because there are quite a few, but that was one that really stuck with and uh, really presented something that most shows will not even dare touch on. Captain Planet tried to touch on that and it was awful. So this, <laughs> this was really well done. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, just a quick story about the influence uh, that it had on kids. Um, you know, years later I was working on a show called Mad TV, which is a sketch show. And um, we hired this new actor, Jordan Peele, who came into my office and he just stopped in the doorway and he said, oh, my God. <laughs> and he said, you're the dad on Roundhouse. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he uh, just grew up with the show, loved the show, was, uh, you know, he, he just shared about how it was an influence on him and comedy and, you know, that uh, it was it was part of what made him want to do what he did. Um, so anyway, so just uh, just because Julene, you know, was sharing about that, which I think is so true, uh, but just a, just an interesting, um, you know, he's obviously gone on to great success and, um, but it was a show that he grew up on and, and really loved. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy to see who's influenced by your show. Like you never know who's truly watching until you encounter them or hear the feedback online later on. Uh... So g going along that, uh, what was it like trying to balance the comedy with heavy themes? Uh, did you catch a lot of flack from that, from uh, from Nickelodeon? Uh, what was it like performing it? What was it like writing it? It was, a diff it was difficult at times to convince Nickelodeon, especially to let us do the gang episode. <clears throat> they, had, they had problems with that. And it took a long time to talk the standards and practice people into allowing us to do it because we thought it was a very important topic to cover for kids. And they finally let us do it. But they, you know, they were careful in a, in a lot of times a good way. And sometimes it was, it was interference and, a, and it was hard to talk them into it. But I think they were, um, they had a lot of, influence on us if we were going to go past the point of what teenagers or teenagers should be seeing i think they were they were good about saying that's not well, let's don't go that far but yeah we did have to walk a fine line um for that kind of thing and i think the writers i have to give so much credit to the writers of roundhouse and to buddy buddy was just such a great comedy writer and he could turn on a dime to something that was more poignant and bring it about in a really good way um the pilot episode uh, on the date could go from a really funny thing and 
to the boxing match to I want it to Crystal Sun and I want to be me. So he was really good at that, and so were the other writers. I have to give so much credit to such a fine writing staff. And John Crane, I have to say, you were so important to yeah. because you were on stage acting with everybody, portraying the, your part, but you knew what the heart of the show was. You were so good. The writing, your writing was so fabulous. Well, well, uh, thank you, Rita. But, uh, you know, this this is a great opportunity for me to say, and I think everybody here feels the same way. Another experience that I've never had since and didn't realize when we were doing this show, Rita Sheffield put her trust in everybody in the cast. There was never a moment where I felt, and I, again, I guess I can't really speak for everybody else, where we didn't feel so completely supported by Rita in whatever our craft was and in whatever we were doing. And I know that there were battles that she was fighting, <laughs> um, <laughs> those kinds of creative battles with, with, with Nickelodeon that we never even really were touched by. She made, you know, she's, I've never worked with another producer uh, before or since who just said, who, the message always was, I believe in you, I believe in your talent, go. Uh, and Thank so, you, and, and so, you know, that. to, to the, yeah. And I, I, I always felt it as a writer. I always felt it as a performer. It but was I just, did, and I again. I felt that from you too, John. You were very, I remember so many times you coming and helping me with stuff like, we can make this funny, Nick, because I was an actress. So it was like, he, was, he would help me with my lines and like, and, Ju, and, and Julie too. It's like, it was, we were a team. Like there was times where we helped each other out. I think that. Yeah, we're like, taking from each other. Yeah, I love casting people that were so talented that I didn't have to do the work for them. These, you guys were all so good, and you were cast for a particular reason that I could give you that responsibility for carrying your part. And I love directing talent that is so there. You are all so there. And important. Yeah, Rita, I, re I remember we'd be goofing, goofing off and Rita would watch us and go, I like that. Let's let's try to do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do that. Yes. Everybody had their part. Like ev each person needed everybody and everybody needed each person. And it wasn't like if one person was gone, we had a hole. And that was, you know, what happened when we, we lost Dominic, you know, it was like glad that Sean came on to replace but that was a hole for us for a second like we as a group went through that or when I was pregnant and Nickelodeon wanted to fire me and the whole cast was like no she's not going anywhere you know we'll just put props around her it was like we were knew that we couldn't do it without everybody and trusted everybody to do their part that's what was beautiful I thought yeah I was going to say, yeah, I feel like that's a common thread in a lot of the shows we've covered so far on this podcast is um, that that little pocket of like early 90s Nickelodeon was really just like a breeding ground for so much creativity and trust in all the producers, whether it's like Roundhouse, Sorry for the Dark, Tomorrow People, Rugrats, Doug, you name it, anything literally that we've mentioned so far. Um, I think I think it's just a time where like everything really lined up really well. People were like hungry for something new and fresh and very like off the edge but also still relatable and interesting and a lot of these people who came together for these shows were able to provide for that just because you know either the execs or the the showrunners of these particular shows had enough faith in their cast and crew that they would do the right thing and make something quality and memorable and Roundhouse is definitely up there as one of those shows that last the test of time, even if it isn't as quite as popular as some of the other ones. And, and uh, to piggyback on what Brett was saying about some of the, the lesser popular ones, uh, because you get shows like Double Dare and that show, they sprinkle Double Dare in everything on Nickelodeon when, in the late 80s and early 90s. And then you got shows that were like Welcome Freshman and My Brother and Me that they were on their show. And then that was it. They, they didn't put it out throughout uh, anything else on Nickelodeon. Roundhouse got to do 
Nick takes over your school. Uh, Roundhouse got to do the Kids' Choice Awards. And I was... We got to be BJ's on MTV. That was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh. So, so I was I was wanting to know, for those of you who had performed in other areas in Nickelodeon, how different was it to perform in a different area, even though you're still in front of a live audience, which we were used to, how different was it to be off the set of Roundhouse and performing on a different venue? Well, I, I, I had been performing uh, before Roundhouse. I mean, I think the cool thing was like, I got a lot of jobs after Roundhouse. They'd be like, oh, that's a chick from Roundhouse. We have her. And that was, that was cool. I think the only difference was, um, Really, it's just the it's the it's the caring about each other and how we can nurture each other and having this constant like we had this routine and I would always come in the first day after four years I was still nervous because I was like you get your I do the table reading and I wasn't good with that it's like I can dance but I can't talk and like you know, but, but everyone was like your cheerleader and like even with the songs and stuff like that and um, I don't know if, yeah I don't think I've had that again of where everyone is like cheering you on and wanting you to succeed as much as Roundhouse wanted me to succeed. Well, I just know with me and Alfred watching, I know we had to uh, do a lot of improv, but doing from the show, that taught us how to how to write it down and script our stuff now and, you know, me and put it in a certain level like that. So that was that was the thing when we started doing our own shows. Now we had a structure thing, how to go on from that. So that helped us a lot on that. I think for myself, when I moved on, I just expected it to be like Roundhouse, like work. And I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting backed up by my peeps like I was, you know, then. And so I kept my integrity of what I would have performed, you know, with everyone on Roundhouse, but I don't feel that you're, you're more separated, but that came from, you know, the top, that came from Rita, that, that came from Rita being like trusting everybody, hiring just the right people and being open to the creativity. Like who has it? I know someone here has it, who has a creativity. The, the, when I moved on in the, the other shows that I did, it was more like time is money. Just do your part and, and then let's go home. It wasn't like, the energy wasn't there of the embodiment of the soul, I feel like. Roundhouse had it, its own soul, for sure. Yeah, it sounds like they feed off each other in that respect, like just to keep the synergy going, the audience and the, the cast and the crew who are performing. Yeah, and stuff we did all together, no one ever felt like, oh, that's stupid. You know what I mean? Like, you didn't feel like, oh, that's stupid. Oh, don't, you shouldn't do that. Or, you know, you would try to work with it. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. But I like that. That was, that was amazing. Yeah, that's the good thing about the show is that everything is moving at such a, a quick pace that if something didn't work for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Move on to the next thing. You know, within the span of an episode or two, you know, there's going to be something for everyone. And I think that helps, you know, broaden its appeal as well as people are finding it over time, especially, you know, people who are into like theater or music or dance or acting. Yeah. Younger generations have just grabbed it. They, they go, it's like having a psychedelic trip. 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that yep uh, i'm not sure that pitch would have worked in the room but i think you're right <laughs> uh sean you had mentioned earlier that you you had to fill a gap which we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit but uh in in the time that you had when you think roundhouse is there any particular favorite memories that you have doing the show oh god we had <laughs> We had a lot of fun memories. There were there were moments that, that uh, uh, for me, like little things that would stand out in my mind was um, uh, sometimes they have nothing to do with the actual show, but uh, mm-hmm. the soundstage. I I went to Radford uh, a couple months back, well a year ago, a little more than a year ago. We went and visited a friend of mine who hosted the talk, and we walked past our old soundstage. And of course, it's kind of surreal and it gets nostalgic and I get goosebumps and there's no more Gilligan's Island Lagoon. Ever. It's a parking oh, yeah, structure. The Gilligan's Island. You know, I mean, uh-huh. little moments like that where uh, uh, you, if, correct me if I'm wrong, Natalie, you know this one. Didn't Seinfeld, they filmed there on the soundstage, right? on. Uh, <laughs> so that was kind of a big heyday. And I guess he was on on the on the sound set 
or you know on the studios that <laughs> everybody was fan fanning out oh my god Seinfeld's here Seinfeld's here uh we got a couple of actors from different shows that would come and sit in this in the uh stands they bring their kids the kids were fans um those were kind of fun um funny moments um I don't know. There's just a lot of good stuff. Uh, I got a kick out of watching Ivan. Uh, you know, everybody looks at Ivan. He's the post boy. He's he's this you know amazing dancer and he's talented. What always struck me with Ivan, and it's manifested itself in what he does now. Every time the camera stopped or we were in between pause, Ivan would try to find a way to the camera guys, or he'd be in. Tell me if I'm wrong, Rita or Benny, but he was constantly always in production. He was always learning. He was gleaning information. He was absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. It was something that was different. Um, I would, we would have family around. So Barry would uh, be our choreographer, right? We've all known Barry, uh, and his wife now Carrie would come in every so often. You know, Seymour would bring his kids around. I used to babysit Seymour's little girl um they would but you'd bring family around and all of a sudden that changed the dynamic of the set and i'm sure that's how it is on, on a, a lot of productions but it's weird because these are they're, for me it, they're peers uh that all just happen to have a job at the same place you know mickey mentioned you know we all had different jobs dance jobs here there and now you're all working on the same one gig, but it's just different. It's a different chemistry. So there's little moments that would happen. We used to mess around, play football outside, and then boom, got to run in and go do voice recording, right? Or, uh, you know, you'd be in there uh, doing some kind of playing soccer. Uh, Ivan, I, I'm not David. Uh, David and I were roommates. David's a huge soccer fan. So when we're not on stage and everybody's blocking in there, he's in the back playing FIFA psych soccer on his video game. Uh, those kind of little moments stand out to me because that that's uh, you're there so much that uh, you start finding your, I guess, would you call it your, your home comforts, the things that would make you feel at ease. But it, you walk on that sound stage and you're like, you, you came home. You might leave, drive to your actual home, but for some reason when you show up in the morning, for your call time to do whatever it was, you'd land on that soundstage and it's like you were in your home. Props were your furniture. Now, John is the only one that knows how to do the chair. That's why he does the chair, right? <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, oh, and another thing, the show is funny because of the talent of the individuals. I, I probably have never been in an environment where there was so much improv that could never make it on the show I joke with Alex. So I made a joke with Alex right before we went on. I say before we went on air. I kind of did that on purpose. You know what it's like to try to put a Zoom together with a multitude of people five minutes before we're going to go on. I know he's scrambling, trying to make it all work. So I text him a joke, make it kind of funny. And I know in his heart, he was like, oh, please don't do that. <laughs> oh, no. no. But we would improvise. Or my favorite thing is to be the participant, to watch Alfred, Seymour, John, mark natalie throw something together just because we're in breaks and they'll take these characters and it will go all day long it'd be a running theme uh you two remember this one yeah. <laughs> uh they'll get it because they know what it was but they're running in play <laughs> so when one would turn then the other one would turn uh <laughs> Those, these are moments of brilliance that would take place and somehow they would, I don't know if they ever really manifested themselves <laughs> in characters we play on stage, but uh, that's the creative energy and the juice that would go on on stage. And, and that's what kept it interesting. And I probably went off on a tangent somewhere, but you know, that's what I, I do. I'm prone to do that. Yes, will tell you right now. <laughs> I was actually going to ask about the chair because you, when you think of Roundhouse, that's usually the first thing that comes to mind. And I'm curious, uh, what's the story behind the development of that chair? Like, why is it motorized? Why did this dad sit in it? And if anyone else took it for a spin, you know, either on or off an episode. Luckily, I had this chair to sit around in and get to read comic books. This thing will go anywhere. It's amphibious. I'll even take it in the water if I want. One thing it doesn't have is a speaker system. I've got the television. I got the barbecue pit. Here's my entrance. Excuse me. 
that's a total creation of Buddy Sheffield. <laughs> it was his thing. He created that in his own mind and had a purpose for it and loved, put everything that was on it on it. He knew exactly what he wanted on that show. <laughs> Beautiful photo. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Mm. So that was all Buddy. And everybody rode in it. At one, well, not at <laughs> No, that's not true. I was afraid okay. to sit in that chair. It was like sacrilege to sit in that chair except for John. Well, that, <laughs> it was John's, right? Yeah. It was John's. Hey, you know what? We learned, me and Alfred learned, we do a cop bit now where we learn from that chair. And Alfred does his cop. And he has everything. He has, uh, I mean, a whip. He has handcuffs. He has, uh, I mean, it's, it's, just too, it's just crazy stuff now. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's really funny. Yeah. Oh, I will say I got very good at it. I could stop on a dime. I could yeah. I could hit a mark yes. like you yeah. couldn't believe. Yeah, I knew did. exactly how that thing worked, how fast it would go, and how long it would take to stop. And uh, <laughs> did you ever take that thing on the road? <laughs> well, we well not not in the very last episode we took it outside. You know, the, the very last episode the, it drives out of the gate of the studio, and I think that was the only time. I think that was the only time it actually left the studio in the show. I think all, all the other times it was inside the studio, yeah. There was an episode where you all do the the ending, you know, reprise the theme song, and then John turns around and starts to go to the uh, upstage, and Ivan is not looking. And Ivan starts to almost cross right in front of John, and, and John stops. And apparently, there's a horn on it because you could hear it. Beep, 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 beep. And then Ivan goes, "Oh!" and slightly gets out of the way so John can keep going. It was very, very brief. I was like, "Did did John almost run over Ivan?" And he did. Quick, reprise the theme song and roll the credits. Whenever my love gets me so down, I know I can go down. <laughs> Wait, you never see a chair on wheels before? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, this is like season two. It, it had been around for several episodes at this point, so this yeah. this is this is nothing new. Uh, going along with uh, memorable moments, and because uh, we haven't heard a lot from from some of the ladies, uh, and I know that Crystal and Mickey have heard this question before because I've I've had the great honor to get to interview the both interview them both previously, but. Um, that was for Instagram Live. This is a whole new uh, beast that we're tackling. And uh, I, I know there are some fans that many of you are already a part of the uh, the Facebook group. And uh, I did ask them if they had any particular questions uh, because this is this is a rare moment. And, uh, and one of the questions that they had both in the interview that I had with the two of you and uh, and also for here was what are some of your favorite songs that you've performed or heard i i I mean how many did i sing benny four five oh many they were my favorite all of them i do not care i can run yeah i loved i do not care The award winner, I Can Dream. I love that one. Hey guys, remember that? Remember that voice that came out of Crystal when we first heard her? We was like, yes. "That voice coming out of that little body." Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like, Mickey is her. like 
everybody oh. like that and mickey and i were like we're just dancers we're just dancers audition like when we all came together like we talked about that last time and like i was in shock because when i saw chris i was not expecting this voice and then yes. she rapped and i was like what the hell that's right we had rap we love rapping together yeah <laughs> you brought out uh what was uh, Moni, the, 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 yeah, my sister. I was like, oh my god! But I was like, I hope they don't make me sing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you could sing, Nikki. You see, you could. Sing. My audition was Happy Birthday. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you were always like, good. <laughs> you were good. You were totally you were good. good. But I had the same, you know, reciprocal. Uh, thing that I would look at you guys and think, oh my gosh, in my dreams could I dance? You like got I to, but everybody got to be the last dance. I was in one dance bumper. <laughs> Amy, Jennifer, what about the two of you? Was there any particular song that you enjoyed performing more than the other? Uh the one I was my favorite was I think it was called I Still Believe. I still believe, I still believe in you. It was I think it was up for one of the, I think that was nominated for the eight, one of the ace it was it was, uh, it was it nominated was. for best song like my favorite song i think that was one of my last shows that was towards the end when i was you i thought you were on for two seasons i i think it was just one but you guys i'm so old i can't remember <laughs> nothing <laughs> no because it's reminded not me of everything it's just like a whole other time though, right? dimension <laughs> <laughs> i really loved uh i mean i loved all the songs but probably my top my favorites are the bumper was Jennifer, I always can hear you singing the music. Yeah, I and love that one. That was so fun. Yeah. I love that one. I loved all, of it, but um, "World Be Still" was just like makes me cry. <laughs>
But now your love seems to lead me to the light. Beautiful though. They were off. Uh, and and I'm gonna transition over to Natalie because we haven't heard much from Natalie. Uh, everyone has already said how amazing you were uh, when we first started this. What are some of the challenges that you faced during this show? Um, as sometimes it was hard not to break because um, Alfred and Seymour just they just killed me and it was just hard because it was sometimes hard to turn it off and just do, you know, just especially me, myself and Sidoni were kind of, I called us the utility people, right? So part of being able to do like a little bit of everything is you get to do a lot of everything, you know, especially in this thing. So um, that was the challenge was just to uh, you just get because we were the utility people we're usually just serving it and then someone else like kind of hits the punch and so you got to serve it clean so that you know there's got to be a straight man somewhere and i mean we got to land things there's no question about it we, everybody got an opportunity to land their jokes mickey ended up being so funny oh my god from like day one to like throughout the season i was like oh she's no, but i remember that time when i was trying to be funny you looked at me and you were like <laughs> but I always did that. I, I always were, did you that. Were the, were you were playing the girl, and I had to be like overly. I always remember that, and I loved it. Cause, okay, yeah. well, what's funny is when I was playing the girl. Now that was the first time that I there was a you know a, a storyline around me being like the girl, and that was probably the most challenging because even though like my dream had come true, I realized that I'm not the girl. I'm the teacher. I'm the one that comes in and does the one line. I'm the host. Uh, I got to be in the bumpers, you know. I'm not the girl. So I all of a sudden had to be like the girl and, you know. Uh, but you did. You were it. You did it, Natalie. You were the girl that episode. That was that was one of my favorite shows. That Yeah. It was, it was great, but you want to know, like, the underneath part of it. All night long, I probably slept two hours. I had headphones with Crystal Lewis all night long and i was like oh let me channel let me channel. every album that she'd ever done what did i put in a cassette i don't know it was probably a cd and i would just listen and you know so that's true you had to do so much you dance and you acted and then you sang and you, and you talked to the guitar didn't you have like the scene with marty with the guitar that scene oh all the acting was i mean it was all just it was just so great and that was a fun really fun um episode but i was gonna say i lived and died with all the bumpers so tell me that tell me that tell me that you like yeah. it you be <laughs> oh, so, that was a great one yeah that was also, one of my favorites loving it also being like one of the utility people i always had the alto line i had the interesting like supporting line it was just so great it was just i mean you got to stretch every part of you there wasn't you know there was no artistic stone unturned you didn't feel stifled there was always something that pushed you and then and then if you didn't know what to do i would just look at john i would just you know I, I could just look and then i would get something you know i would just it's not that you're stealing it's that that you're going all right let me tap into that genius for a second okay you know you can't be that person but you can take something in there and then off of that energy so and you, but and i do want to and you made a good point because what us dancers mickey understand when we see oh we gotta do that but i was terrified every day like oh how are we gonna do that so we had to watch each other and just say okay <laughs> so, so seymour and alfred were my best friends that we were like they were <laughs> my they were truly my best friends the whole the all all the from day one to the last year which we still oh. stay in touch you know and um you know that kind of these raw like they didn't go to juilliard but they were the most polished amazing funny um sponges 
And, you know, and you watched everybody's skill set get better. You know, it just got faster and better. And, you know, so that was another thing, too, when you start just from the beginning. It's like you saw all the raw. And that's all Rita. Just going, oh, my God, you're just so great. Let me just. And then she would just guide us, you know. There was never like, oh, I see it like this. Do that. Do that. I just, I let you do what you do. That's what I yes. hired you for. That's Sorry, I'm losing, good, right? I'm losing light here. Very professional. Um, oh, it's fine. The last thing I just wanted to say was that I, I just want to like just talk about how incredible Barry Lather was with these dance bumpers, because um, that's what I lived and breathed was just watching them. Sometimes I got to be in them. Um, it's just incredible that these songs and these bumpers, vocal bumpers and dance bumpers, just came out in you know prolific amounts every single week. And then on Thursday, we went and recorded them. So Monday, you learn it, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, everybody's like changing it around. And Thursday, you're in the recording studio. <laughs> right. And then just the power of Jennifer and Amy and Natasha also, you know, and I mean, Crystal was, that was the beginning for me. So, she, you know, that little voice unleashed and I just lost my legs. Um, and that she's, I, I, we're still like that. I introduced my daughter to Crystal's music and, uh, you know, anyway, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't put words on talent, but just want to shout out to Barry Lather and those bumpers. And I'm going to turn on a light. I had just thought of this and, and I, I, I meant to put this for an earlier question, but it just now occurred to me, uh, because we had talked about SNCC and, uh, SNCC throughout its entire lineup has had some really cool, hosts uh who would be the mc of the whole event there was one night i believe it was season two of uh of um roundhouse where there was a snick live with the cast of roundhouse at least that's the way it was advertised hey nickelodeon at roundhouse we're pretty psyched about hosting snick live hey cool live you know live spelled backwards is evil spelled inside out it's vile sideways Snick live outside. with roundhouse tonight starting at 8 7 central only on nickelodeon and uh mm -hmm. and and then the there would be little bumpers little interstitials with the cast of roundhouse hi welcome to snick live with the roundhouse cast and just to prove that we are coming to you live i got a calendar right here see this june 4th that's today huh and right now, it's 7.59 and 6 seconds. Stick around, because a little later, Ren and Stimpy will be on live, too. Have you ever seen those guys from the side? They're really, really thin. You heard it here. We're live hosting Snick, and in a couple of hours, we'll be live while we do Roundhouse. Ooh, anything can happen, so don't dare move. And now, here's one of the kickiest chicks on Snick, Clarissa. <laughs> And then it would end, uh, that they, they actually had Roundhouse end Snake. Usually it would be Are You Afraid of the Dark? This time it was with Roundhouse. Was that actually live or was that? It, yes, it was actually it was live. live. Yeah, Rita directed that. She can it tell was you about it. Crazy. It was everybody I, it kind of started on a dare because mm -hmm. we did the show we shot the show in real time which was something i insisted on mm -hmm. uh we did take a 30 second break you know for just a commercial but we came right back very few fixes uh, and, you know in the show so knowing that we did it uh in real time i knew that we could do it i knew we could do it live to broadcast um and i took a dare and did it and everybody did great they did great that's awesome oh i love it that, that that's a true testament to the faith and the trust you put into all your cast yes i knew they could do it and they did they came through with flying colors i am curious if there's ever been any roundhouse merchandise that's ever circulated at all or if like anyone um took some like props or like had some sort of like cast and crew special stuff that they took away from the show once it was over if anyone I had took any my chair. stories I had chair. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, Ooh, I see it. it. This has everybody's name on it. Ooh, uh, autographs. Everybody's name on it. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, great looking. Amazing. Oh, yeah, cool. We got it. We got wow. script over there. Wow. <laughs> and I have. Oh, man, that's great. FYI. Two. Oh, one, two. Whoa. Wow. Even more. And mind you, 
I've already given out about three or four of these that were fully signed by cast to other fan members on the what are now the Roundhouse group. Oh. Um, that came up years years ago. Years ago. Do we get somebody new here, Brett? I think David Nickel. All right. David. Yeah. Nickel. Uh, you know, we all got we all got jean jackets with Roundhouse on the back of them. And my son, oh, they were letting him get it. Now twenty six, wore it until it was nothing but threads. And oh, no. uh, oh, what? Speaking of jean jackets, yeah, no, we I all had, got them. We all got them. Yeah, I had a jean jacket with, everybody, with everybody's name signed on it. I sold it, and now I'm living in a small mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Smart move, Seymour. <laughs> what y'all don't know is Seymour sitting outside Home Depot right now in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. Uh, love it by the way really quickly i also have this man. this was uh, oh man <laughs> yeah is that from the sports episode that's right that's right yeah still have that. one of my Frank, favorites Frank, love it i have all i have all my wardrobe is there is there a favorite piece of wardrobe that you liked wearing on the show crystal i love crystal's outfits so much. Thanks. Um, I would have to say my most, my favorite thing was the floral dress on the pilot episode or the boxing yes. match, the dating. Yes. Episode. Mm -hmm. I have that. Mm -hmm. so. um, I love what, when I, the episode I mentioned with Mickey, uh, the beauty pageant episode. I have that dress and matching hat. I loved that too. And, and we, we had pointed it out before we started the official episode when everyone was just getting in, but behind Amy, Amy, you want to point out what that shirt, what that jacket is? Yeah, that's so rad. Rebel. I, I had Rebel Entertainment. I, I yeah. have uh, one of my jean jackets with the Amy to the, the fans for like, they did like a raffle, but I still have my, my round. I still have my round in this. That's cute. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. My first. Cool. Very cool. Cool. <laughs> All right. I think uh, I think David's connections got s set up. Uh, hi, David. Hey. Hi, David. Hey. hey, hey. hey Welcome hey. to the 30th anniversary reunion of Roundhouse. Good to see everybody. Well, David, uh, for introductory purposes, for those for those of us, uh, for those of our listeners, because uh, everyone has introduced themselves, would you introduce yourself and how long you've been on the show? Uh, my name is David Nickel, and I was on the fourth season of Roundhouse. And uh, I'm I'm going to put you on the spot right off the bat. Uh, this is the, this is a. This is a question we had for a few others already, but uh, I, I I love picking brains, even if it's the same question. Uh, when it comes to Roundhouse, what are some memories that you think of immediately? Playing soccer in the little field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not great yeah. fun. We used to have so much fun out there on our breaks, <laughs> playing games. Um, I mean, I, I have to say, like, having uh, my own dressing room, that was freaking cool. You know, it was just, it was pretty cool being a little star for a minute. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a blessing. To, I had just came out there to Los, Los Angeles, you know, from Orlando. And they were already in Orlando and then came to Los Angeles. That was pretty cool. Um, and I just felt very blessed to be a part of this whole the show man it was awesome now did you know some of the other uh cast and crew members already before you joined the show or did you hear about it some by some other means uh some some i did but i don't think i knew a lot of the people that were already on the show i know um well i knew sean but then sean knew me yeah Mickey was Mickey is about. I think you're the only one that really knew knew, you know, before the show, um, before I got on the show, and then I knew Brian uh, from. I thought you was Brian Anthony. Yeah, Brian Anthony, um, and and I knew Sean. That was about it. That was really about that that I really knew knew you know that I had hung out with and stuff. You know, Mickey used to come up to the to the house um, to visit everybody. So we were all already cool, but yeah, I didn't know the whole the real cast. I was a I was a newcomer to everybody. 
<laughs> did did you ever feel any i mean again because we've had this conversation previously with the others i, I i'd like to hear what you have to say uh without knowing what they said Go, coming into this cast did you ever feel any pressure at all to match their level uh did you what, what were some of the challenges that you, that you faced coming into this cast absolutely i mean they had the thing with us when we came in it was already a, uh somewhat of a family you know so we were like the the, the cousins that came into town um yeah, good you know I like what I mean? it was like, <laughs> they, you know it was different because for, for brian it was different because brian knew everybody you know everybody knew brian brian was like their friend already but i wasn't i'm from florida you know, and Natasha wasn't either. And so we didn't know anybody and we didn't even know each other, but we did kind of bond, me and Natasha, just because we, it, it was a little weird, man. It was like coming into, it was like stepping into their ground and they were like, hey, you know what? Okay, but you know, you're gonna have to work for it. You're gonna have to work for the shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, so we, it was a little different. It wasn't like, hey, Hey, welcome arms and you're gonna do this part we're, we're me and Natasha are like well, I hope we get a part this week you know <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it was, it was a little it was a little it wasn't like the easiest but it wasn't hard nobody was mean nobody was rude or anything you know it wasn't like that but you know they they ever yeah we're stepping into a family that you know long lost family what do you love doing most on the show I, I yeah. love the opportunities that I had to act play a soccer you know, act yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what soccer. you better say sing <laughs> no you know i of course i love singing but i knew i was there to sing so the opportunity to have a little acting part was huge for me and not only that but like i was i was a dancer and so, but I wasn't hired to be a dancer. So I couldn't, wasn't able, I wasn't allowed to dance, you know? So I got in one dance routine the whole season and that felt I great. Didn't know you could dance. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, She's in the back. Yeah, I just want to do everything, you know? <laughs> no, can, wait, can I share a story, David? Yes. So when David first comes to LA, I was I was dating uh, someone whose sister was a recording artist, and we had a barbecue at a big apartment complex in Studio City, and I decided I'm gonna grill some chicken, and I had blackened that chicken up. It was just so bad, right? Nobody wanted to eat it. Here's this little, you know, <laughs> he knows this, right? So later in the evening, there's a whole bunch of entertainment people, right? We're all dancers, singers, whatnot. David's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> You can eat that if you want it. Oh, nobody else want to eat it. Man, David <laughs> killed about eight pieces of that burnt chicken. I was like, who is this boy? <laughs> then David starts. I don't know what. I think Chris Dupre. You know Chris Dupre. He's the one he's that, a that always would. Chris yeah, you know, he's the, the one that. Yes. Du, Dupre, yes. Mm -hmm. Dupre has this magic about finding talent. There's not a whole lot of folks that come to LA from outside that Chris hasn't known, right? So anyhow, Chris said, David, sing. No, 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 David, sing. David sings, and it was the stereotypical, who put this black woman in this white boy's body? <laughs> this <laughs> that came out of David was <laughs> magnetic. It was so crystal clear, resonating. The, he shut a room up of professional singers. They, there were some real people there. And we were like, what the what? point i never saw david not sing i would drive down the street and see david walking down the street not even knowing we're there with headphones on singing louder than whatever he could have been listening to 
perfect pitch. Uh, that's why when you say, oh, not seeing it, David, you you are born to sing. You know this already. We're not telling you anything you don't know, but I will tell you that's how David made his impact. And then another thing is we used, David's super athletic. A lot of folks don't know this about David. Uh, we used to play a game called Wally Ball, right, Mickey? There was a racquetball center in Studio City, and they put a volleyball net between, and we'd all go down there and play what's called volleyball. We'd stri stretch a volleyball net across the walls, and we'd play volleyball. David used to run and scale the wall to the top of the second floor and grab the rail and climb up. Or he'd do running backflips off the wall, just because. <laughs> he'd have a I'm going to flip off the wall. <laughs> that boy was super athletic and not a lot of people know that besides his singing that kid can jump <laughs> <laughs> and then i became a power ranger right after oh power no power. don't follow in my footsteps on that too I <laughs> oh boy on that, my ears are burning <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah you I did that the, show. That's I right. Didn't do the oh. tour. I didn't do the tour. I did stunts. I know. I did the tour. That tour ended my career. We had um, reached out to, for, for those who are watching, We there were several others that we had reached out to and weren't able to be here for one reason or another. And uh, we, we we wish them well and, and very sad that you couldn't join us tonight. But uh, completely understand why. Uh, but there is one cast member who might not be here in person, but I there's not a doubt in my mind that they're here in spirit. So I do want, because you, you can't, you, you can't talk about Roundhouse and not talk about Dominic. Uh, so in honor of the 30th anniversary and in honor of Dominic, does anybody want to share any favorite memories of what it was like working with Dom? Um, I'll say something as, as his dance partner because Mickey and Ivan were dance partners a lot and Dominic and I were dance partners and we wondered one time Dominic goes I think the director likes Mickey because after every dance bumper it goes to her and so we did an experiment we switched and he was Mickey's dance partner and the camera went over to them he goes yeah it's true oh <laughs> I he has a crush on her we're laughing but um the other thing that i don't know if a lot of you know this but you know my daughter was born at the end of the show but my son's father's name is dominic lucero so my son's last name is lucero and i always thought that you know it was a sign that my son's father i was like oh i'm being guided to this person but uh dominic lucero is definitely still in my life in one way or another but I will say he is the most talented dancer he was the most brilliant singer and he always wanted to act and he left Michael Jackson's tour to do Roundhouse and uh, he really wanted his turn to shine as much as he loved back at Michael Jackson he always wanted to act and when he got to be the boy I remember how special that was for him because it was his turn he was a beautiful soul for sure he's a star yeah. definitely a star I I don't love that this is my favorite memory but I did sing at his memorial service at his funeral and that was so so memorable and special for me I was struck by how um, in his dancing, well, in everything, um, he made everything look so easy. And he just had this like effortlessness about him. Um, but yet when it was time to hit a pose or to hit a mark, um, he was so spot on that it was, it was just, uh, electrifying he he just was electrifying and you couldn't put your your you couldn't put your finger on it because he was so like um gentle and unassuming and very calm and super funny um and uh, i mean we were like diametrically opposed i was very spastic and very up and he was just like glass you know like a still sea and um 
it was fascinating because the just he was a star that he was so shiny he was so <laughs> shiny and and obviously he already was dealing with you know not feeling well and already all of that was going on underneath and of course i never knew it you know so Same, yeah. Mine was a great memory of dominic was that in the very end he was on the show as mm -hmm. sick as he was came back, he came back to our, our, our season mm -hmm. he, he came back and one thing i have to say is that sean and david and brian all of it took three people to try to replace Dominic, and as good as all three of you were, you weren't Dominic. So he had these things that he could do that no one else could do. But I love that he was strong enough to come back, and he practically everybody had to hold him up. Practically, he was mm -hmm. far right. gone. I have to say, he lived. His mother told me he lived to watch Roundhouse mm. and just to be a part of it. And I thought it was important for us to bring him back and let him stand there with all of uh, the cast, all of his family, and be a part of it. And he did it. He was strong enough to do it. I think I think it was an amazing moment that I'll never mm. forget. I still have that photo from that day on set. You do. He sat in the center. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. it, it was particularly poignant too when uh, I think is the final episode where everyone took a, a bow of silence in his memory. Yeah. Uh, after things closed up. Also, we'd like to say that this show would not be what it is today without Dominic Lucero. Uh, Dominic, yeah. More than that, he was an exceptional human being, and we'd like to dedicate uh, this show and a period of silence to his memory. And like yeah. Natalie said, he was so, he, he was so professional with me. He made it look so easy. There was a few times where I would see him in the back and he would be just gassed out, like just tired. And I was like, well, what's wrong with Dominic? And they were like, oh no, 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 he's just, and I was like, oh, okay. But he would come back and mm -hmm. gone, gone dad. Gone too soon. Yeah, bless yeah. him, man. That's sad. At least Dominic's still up in the sky now as a star. I'll tell you what, for those of you that have not seen it, and everyone here probably has, but for the fans, if you want to see something dynamic watching Dominic dance, watch the Academy Awards performance that he does with Paul Abdul. It's electric. Watch mm. Dominic dance there. He is absolutely flawless in that routine. It's mm. even better than the stuff that he did with Michael. Really, the, let me tell you. That was the, ladies, you correct me if I'm wrong, that was the epitome of the strongest male dancers that we had in LA at the time. So he's in the best company and completely holds his own. Brett, any other questions for you before we start getting to some of our closing questions? This one does interest me because we did touch upon it a little bit in the beginning about, um, you know, just just like the format of the show. And I'm, I'm actually curious if there's like, and ever any plans to like revive it at all or how would you see it being adapted for a modern audience if it were to come back uh, anyone have any thoughts on that um we pitched a reboot at nickelodeon um in 2018 and they passed on it and did rebooted all that instead all that was the show that replaced us on air and they rebooted that and i did tell them all the ways that we would make it uh, fit today and i had a place in the reboot for many of the cat all of you guys the cast members to come in and out of it you know in a special like a, a platform that would overlook the set and something would be going on with the new cast and you guys would go oh no no no, no. that's not how we did it we did it like this and we did that and then you just what, like a to it. Like yeah. a Statler and Waldorf type deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I love so that. that. It would have been so much fun. I, I really wanted them to do it. I want. I just want them to air it on Paramount Plus. I just want to make an appeal to anybody out there that has any pull with Paramount Plus. Please dig Roundhouse out of the vault. 
yeah. and put it on the air. And for anybody who would like to That's see people's reactions, there's a link on Amazon of all the people that try to buy Roundhouse, that try to find it. Just read the hundreds of comments from parents, people that had kids that watched the show, kids that grew up watching the show. Yeah, you'd be shocked. You would be shocked at every appeal. They beg to see the show. And there's no product, but there's just hundreds the and hundreds of comments. I'll send you the link, Alex. Yes, we'll put it in the we'll Amazon. put it in the description of the video. Yeah. I mean, that speaks volumes. I know the fans are out there. They're everywhere. They listen to us. They're on different social media. It's just a matter of finding that right avenue where like it clicks and then the switch goes from off to on and, you know, something happens. But we still like to hold out hope. Yeah, with Nickelodeon, uh, particularly uh, with anything uh, nostalgic for uh, my generation and social media, there, there are fan groups, there are pages, there are uh, individual things, and, and it's so scattered everywhere. It's hard to find, find a way to isolate it into one big coherent body. And uh, but there are, as all of you know, there are a, there is a huge fan base. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to find a way to get them all in one place. But, we love all of the fans, and we love what you do, Alex. Yeah, what do. you and you. it's just so cool to have somebody pay this much attention to the show and point out its value. So we thank you for that. It's thank awesome you. that you do that. Yes, yes, yes. My pleasure. My pleasure. Yep. Happy to do it. Before we get into our closing questions, because I did, again, I, I did ask uh, the uh, Facebook group, and I, I want to honor their some of their questions, and, and uh, I don't want to go terribly long because uh, we're 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 closing in on two hours. Um, is there any chance? I mean, we already have a reunion here, uh, but a lot of the Roundhouse fans want to know if there's ever a possibility of some kind of in-person reunion. We I mean, I'm well, down. We, if it happens, yeah. I'm down. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> yeah we're all down. Uh, you know, that's a decision that Nickelodeon uh, probably would have to be a part of, and now Paramount. And, uh, you know, if they would do that and have the interest, I wrote, it would be great. I've written to We've written to them. And asked them several times, please, because they do reunions of all the other shows. We ask over and over, and we have never gotten a response. We beg. Mm. <laughs> well, we're going to use uh, this. We're going to use this episode and get more followers here. So uh, Roundhouse yeah. fans, if you want, yeah, blow this video up. <laughs> Roundhouse fans, if you want streaming, if you want uh, to, to get a reunion episode, send it, email it, get, get this out there for people to see. Right. Because this show deserves a hell of a lot more respect and attention than it's been getting. Amen. Thank you so much. The show is about family. It's about coming together. It's about making creative spontaneity happen. So why not, you know, get all the fans together who embody that spirit that have passed on that legacy and come together for this common goal? It's one of a kind. Yeah, it shouldn't be buried. It shouldn't yes. be buried in a vault. Agreed. Fully agreed. Agreed. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, last main question. Uh, what are some of the biggest lessons that you all took away from this show? And what advice would you give to young performers? You know, just, you know, like you, you think when you're young, you think, oh, I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to be a big star. And, and you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> like, um, you know, we were on TV and we blessed a lot of people. We, bless, we were all blessed to be there and it was fun. But just because you do one thing in your life in Hollywood doesn't mean that you're going to be the biggest celebrity in the world. And so it, it's hard to, to say, don't get your hopes up so high. But then again, it's like, let's be real. You know, yeah. it, you got to you got to keep working. You can't expect it just to happen. You just got to work and work and work. And I think most of us after that just kept doing things. And I think some of us are still in entertainment and some aren't. aren't but um, it's it's a blessing just to be doing what you love to do in front of people, whether you're a celebrity or not. Yeah. My thing is, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, oh man, like uh, don't give up. 
I never thought I would. I'm, I'm not really too much a TV person, but I love live shows. And uh, just stay persistent, keep going, and just it ain't all about being that big star. I don't like it, but just you know, I love doing what I do, and I and that was my, was my goal to keep doing what I love to do, and making a career out of it, and just just go for it. Seymour, Seymour, you are a big star. I see that bodyguard walking by. I'm behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some homeless, some homeless. Dude. Right <laughs> you got your bodyguards, you got a barbecue going on over there. <laughs> that's, that's the OG dancers, right? OG. Shout out. <laughs> he, always, he come over here and wants to jump in my pool all the time. Okay, see, free oh, there you pool. Go. pool. Hey, look there at you go. Nice. Can, can we come over and have the reunion there? Yeah, there you, <laughs> you go. got enough room. <laughs> Man, that's funny. <laughs> The performance, you know, what David was saying, it doesn't matter if you're famous. It's it's about are you connecting with people? Are they feeling your joy? And you sing because you love to sing. You dance because you love to dance. You act because you love to act. And that's what people feel. And, you know, my work with Avatar wouldn't have been as huge as it was if I hadn't had the experience around house, if I didn't know how to trust my team and the other artists and to bring out the best that I could in everybody I feel like Rita taught me how to do that you know you're more bring out more and and I felt that through performing we can use that avenue to lift and awaken the light of life in all of us so I, I really felt that it was my journey starting with Roundhouse that able to give me the confidence to deal with audiences on that level, on that massive level, for sure. Thank you, Seymour. And, and you know, just, just to piggyback really quickly on what Jaleen was saying, just so, so true. Um, we were so fortunate to be surrounded by people who loved and supported us and loved and supported our talent. And, you know, it's, I'm not saying anything new, you know, anybody who gets into the business, you've heard it. If there's somebody who doesn't feel that way about you or doesn't love that about you, then you should consider not having them in your life <laughs> mm -hmm. because um, you need it's it's important, um, you know, that you have that love and support and somebody who's your champion and your coach. And, you know, Rita was that for certainly for me and this cast was that I think for each other. Um, there was a real love and support there that was so invaluable and something that I learned later on was not common. Um, it's not something, it's easy to take that for granted. And I think it was easy to take it for granted once, once uh, for me, once I left and had other experiences in the industry, then you realize, wow, uh, it was, you know, to have that kind of, again, that kind of love and support behind you is, uh, it's really special. And, um, you know, I'm grateful that for, for that time and, and uh, certainly blessed by that too. Absolutely. It was an amazing time. It was, it was, it was awesome to me. <laughs> Thanks for the rides to work, John. <laughs> <laughs> It's the carpool. <laughs> That's right. Except for the time, John, you forgot you were in a carpool and I was still at home and I had to call your wife. I'm like, oh, oh no, really? I don't remember that. <laughs> that. That certainly made its way out of my memory. Sorry about that, Jaleen. I am so sorry. Uh. <laughs> Thank you all deeply for making this anniversary special happen today. Uh, Slimesters. What are your most fondest memories of Roundhouse? Let us know via email at splatattack2021 at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram at splatattack or even in our comment section on our YouTube channel, Splat Attack Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and for more episode updates and leave us a quick two minute rating and review on Apple Podcasts to help us reach even more 90s Nick fans with our content. We know you're all out there, so come on over to our place because we know what's up. <laughs> Again, thank you, Roundhouse guests, for joining us for the reunion. It's such a blessing to have you here today. Share some of your wonderful stories and memories with us, uh, you know, both as co-hosts and for the fans. Yes. Uh, is there anything any of you want to plug before we go? This just came out in May. It's called, yeah, it's called Together We Can, and it's all 
all collaborative and duets and trios and things and it's i'm very proud of it and so there you go <laughs> i would like to say something real quick this is my this is my first time ever meeting crystal <laughs> oh, yeah. Crystal, season one season four i've watched you and i've listened to you and you're amazing and it's finally awesome 20 years later to get to say hi how you doing <laughs> hi <laughs> a lot of tech bringing people together yeah. exactly that's what we do and uh if you get a chance guys me and alfred we still doing the cruises come see us on the cruises disney princess and the royal caribbean sweet and, and look look for uh look for my christmas special it's called a poppin christmas it's on youtube and i'm gonna do the second one this year but the first one is out it's a poppin christmas with lit saint nick i grow my beard out and i'm a cool christmas <laughs> yeah. it's real, it's oh, good. very cool he's killing it he's killing it <laughs> alex will you drain the slime tank for us please happily but before i do there's one thing left to say what's that Reprise the theme song and roll the credits. Whenever my life gets me so down, I know I can go down it. Do it, I'm feeling like I'm never in. As long as the music keeps playing, you know what I'm saying. I know that I can find a friend. Just around now. Praise the theme song and roll the credits. Hard to believe, folks, but it's time to say goodbye. Nighty night. Hey, check us out next time for more adventure and another great legend of the Hidden Temple. What will we do till then? Chill for a couple. We'll be back. You're on there. And it was time for the superhero to move on. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Oh, bye bye. That's good enough. Roundhouse is taped before a live studio audience at Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios Orlando, Florida.